19 minutes before the hour. Well, back in real estate man and multi-millionaire. That's right. This is the great entrance hall to Mar-a-Lago. The tiles are from 1400, and they're ancient Spanish tiles, and throughout the house they have 36,000 of these tiles. They're each in themselves a work of art, and it's a very special, uh, very special entryway, as you can see. So you walk in here and people start gasping just about at this point, right? Well, they, they are very, uh, they're amazed at what they see, as I was when I first walked in and as you were. When you first walked through that door, the first time you walked into this house, what did you think? I couldn't really believe it. I, this was one of the great treasures of the world. It's considered the number one home far and away in America. And I personally just couldn't believe it. And when you see it, you believe it. The ceiling glistens with 1,000 gold leaf wings. Bristol crystal chandeliers light the 60-foot long living room. Seven antique silk tapestries adorn the walls. And the huge stone Italian Gothic fireplace still works. I have not used it, no. I have not. I'm, I'm concerned about using it. I don't want any smoke in the room, to be perfectly honest. In fact, if you notice, we have Mrs. Post's picture right alongside of my wife's picture with town and country. Mm -hmm. So we, we really pay a certain reverence to Mrs. Post and, and what she was able to create because she created a magical house. It's a fantasy house. But are you going to change this room at all? I mean, when no. you're not going to do anything. No. no personal Trump touches here. No. Believe it or not, no. That's just, right. Everything is going to stay exactly the way Mrs. Post would have had it. So this is the dining room. How many does it seat? Well, I guess it seats as many as you want. It just, uh, I really couldn't even tell you. It seats from anywhere from two to probably 50 or 60 people, depending on the way you set it up. And setting it up is an art in itself. Mrs. Post left 17 sets of china in the house. That means the Trumps can entertain 36 of their friends for 19 straight nights and never use the same set twice. Now that's a lot of china. She has a house that, that slept 56, it has 56 bedrooms, and each person that would come as a guest would have their own car and driver. They'd each have a Rolls Royce, the room, the driver, the maid, their own cook. She lived a style that nobody's lived in this country. Nobody in this country has ever lived that style. Now these, these uh, glasses lift their light. They're all actually hand-painted? Yes, all hand-painted, Venetian and, and uh, truly magnificent and not produced. You, you just, you couldn't get glass like this today. Now I know you've already eaten in this room, you've actually yes. had a dinner party. When you sit in here with people all around this table and you eat off of this gold and these are lit, and you sit in this room, what do you think? I say, what am I doing here? How did this happen? <laughs> As a matter of fact, that's precisely what a lot of other people would like to know. Mar-a-Lago has been for sale since 1980. The asking price was a cool $20 million. Donald Trump's deal for the 118-room mansion was nowhere near that price. So he paid $5 million for the house. Well, you said that. I didn't say that. What did you pay for the house? Well, I won't discuss that on national What did you television. pay for the house? Well, I can tell you that, that if you use the number that you're using, you probably wouldn't be too far off. The rest of the deal reportedly includes $3 million for the mansion's furniture and $2 million for the beach, bringing the grand total to a stunning $10 million. If that's true, by Palm Beach standards, Trump got himself an incredible deal. I've been all over the world and I've seen the great castles of Europe and I, I don't believe, with the exception of possibly a Buckingham Palace of Versailles, there is anything in the world not only in this country, but in the world that's comparable to Mar-a-Lago. You've left it exactly the way she had it? Exactly. Now, something that's interesting to me is this little thing here on her door. And you pull this little thing down, and yes. it says, do not disturb resting. That's correct. That's from a different age. So people who are somewhat concerned that they'll start having tour buses come through here, that Mr. and Mrs. Trump will turn this into a real tourist attraction, you can rest their fears? I can rest their fears. I mean, uh, they were also concerned that I was going to turn the house into a great hotel casino. And I have no intention of doing anything like that. So on winter weekends, Donald Trump says you will find him here, entertaining friends and family with a staff of 25, safely protected by a security force of 30. At the young age of 39, Donald Trump has found his castle. 
Lucky Donald Trump, and I must say he was very kind because I think he originally thought this was this tour would take something like 15, 20 minutes. And as you could tell, those rooms are gigantic. And we must thank the lighting people that came along and lit this house beautifully. And it took him several hours to Ooh. take us through. So he said that's the first time he'll do it <laughs> and the last. But we just saw it. Now Mara Lago is the name of it. That is the what a 1920s film star. I don't know, Mar <laughs> it means from sea to ocean. Mar-a-Lago. Uh, mar lago yeah, translation. <laughs> All right, coming up next, we're going to take you to a Florida tennis camp where they train you for mind games as well. It's very close. Not just my due date, but the day that Marla Maples and Donald Trump become mom and dad. Marla's been keeping real busy, though, right up to the last second by designing a new line of maternity clothes called Maternity Moods by Marla. And she joins us from the nursery at Trump's Mar-a-Lago Estate in Palm Beach, Florida. Good morning. You look terrific. Oh, good morning. You've so, been looking great, too. So does your nursery. <laughs> I want that nursery. So how have well, you been I've feeling? Been there. Oh, I've been feeling the best. It's, it's amazing. I always had such fear about pregnancy. I thought it would be something I would be quite nervous about and I've never felt physically better and more tuned into good nutrition and good health because you have a little baby now that's dependent on you. And if all goes as planned, you plan to have natural childbirth. How do you think yes. Donald's going to hold up in the labor room, Marla? <laughs> He doesn't really understand this whole natural childbirth thing. He, every time we have a childbirth class, he goes, just tell her to take the drugs. <laughs> but he understands it now. I've explained it to him a bit, because I think it's the best way to give the, the baby the, the, the best chance at uh, having a healthy life. And, and uh, he's, I'm going to have friends there to hold him up in case he has problems. Yeah, I'm going I'm to wonder who's going to be resuscitating whom. <laughs> I know. He may need more help than you do. I know. I so know. you have not really rested much this pregnancy. How much time has this designing of this maternity line really taken? I'm taking after you with the not resting thing, Paula. <laughs> oh, good. A There's lot. another crazy person it's out there. It's a lot of work. I tell you, I've been filled with a lot of ambition. I think this little girl's going to have a, going to come in with a lot of spunk uh, because I've had a lot of spunk while I've been with her. But um, it's it's a lot that it entails. I mean, there's the fabrics, there's the colors. There's the styles, which I've been learning about as I've been pregnant, what really works and makes me feel good. I just think women's maternity needs to have more choices for women. And today we have, you know, the career, well, you're the career woman, you're the mother at home, you're the athletic lady. So we just are putting together a line now that helps deal with every aspect of Well, why of don't motherhood. we take a, a look now at some of the things Sounds that you've great. come up with? Because it is, you, you, you know pretty early on what works and what doesn't. Boy, have I made a lot of mistakes. We're learning. This is a tunic, much like the one I, just like the one I have on now. It's uh, made out of a, what we call an Italian suede, but it's actually a microfiber that's a really nice, fabric that's that's quite new and you can wear it with a legging or as a dress. It looks very pretty. And this is a nice evening look. It's uh, what we did is it's a um, chiffon sleeve and a silk crepe jacket and we put a palazzo pant with it and we're also going to have a silk of uh, a chiffon pleated skirt and a long skirt with a slit so it sort of fits every woman's needs. Boy the grounds of that estate are so beautiful Marla. Oh, it's really something. And this is for the formal weddings or holiday parties this year. We want to have something so women have just more versatility where they'll feel like going out and feeling like they can fit into almost any situation. You know, this is the first time morning television has ever been allowed into this estate. What yeah. room is that that we just Well, saw? it's my home right now. We're bringing this baby into the world and it's really ha I'm really happy to be able to to be here and uh, it's, it couldn't be a better environment. This is one of my favorite outfits. It's a lace vest with pearl buttons and a nice swing coat, and we're, we're going to have it with palazzo pants skirt. So if you like your legs, show them off. If you'd rather just, you've got that swelly look, then wear your palazzo pants. So everything's going to be interchangeable. And that's preparing for the baby. Aww. Mm -hmm. Looks like you have bassinets and cribs scattered all over uh, the house oh, there. Now, you know she's going to so be a little fun. girl. Now, is it true that, that uh, you and Donald got into some battles about the, the name he has chosen for this little girl, <laughs> Tiffany? He, I think Tiffany is a beautiful name, but he, he's, it reminds him of a successful time in his life. And to me, I looked up the name. It actually was, came forth when the Magi came to see the Christ child. They called it the Epiphany, so that's when the name Tiffany came forth. So. We'll probably, it, she'll have Tiffany in there somewhere. No, we I, haven't completely agreed on in, it. In closing this morning, I want you to be perfectly honest about that. What is this? What has been the most tiring for you? Going through this pregnancy physically or having to deal with all the speculation about when you and Donald might walk down the aisle? It's the emotional trauma, I think, more than anything. Because physically, I've never felt better. And, um, you 
know people put a lot of focus on on the marriage when the most important thing is bringing the baby into a beautiful serene environment where she's going to be loved and nurtured and have two parents that really care about her and that's the most important thing now it's you know we've been together so many years and I think it's obvious that there's a lot of deep feelings there and and there wouldn't be a child coming into the world unless it was meant to be so that's what we're, we're also focused on here. Well, I and wish you the wait. best of luck in the last couple of weeks that you have left before you have this baby. I hope you and Donald make it through a natural childbirth <laughs> there. <laughs> Thank you so much. You may Don. have to hold him up after all. Oh, uh, the best to you too, sweetie. Thanks, and congratulations. Okay. Thank you. We'll be right back. Once upon a time in America, the fabulously wealthy could afford to build palaces that rivaled anything the world had ever seen. One of the finest examples is in Palm Beach, Florida. It's Mar-a-Lago, now owned by Donald Trump, who's turned it into a country club. Our Jose diaz Bilard got a rare tour. He's in Palm Beach to show us around. Good morning, Mr. diaz Bilard. Good morning, Mr. Mark McEwen. Yeah, back in the 1920s, Marjorie Merriweather Post reigned as the queen of Palm Beach, and she built this estate, even though she was only planning to use it about six weeks a year, from the beginning of January to the 14th of February. Well, Donald Trump invited us for an exclusive tour of this place, and I've got to tell you, exclusive is the only way to describe this. It all started when we boarded the Donald Trump's plane in New York City. By the way, the first time Donald Trump tells me that he's allowed cameras into the plane. The view from the window is all you'd recognize on this jet. Guests relax in plush red velvet chairs at cherry wood tables surrounded by oak paneled walls and artwork that you'd normally see in a museum. Very cool. It's a very, very cool. Very, very cool. What other things does this plane have? Well, a bathroom with gold-plated sink and faucets and a hidden toilet. But the jet is absolutely nothing compared to the grandeur of Mar-a-Lago. This party, attended by among others Whitney Houston, was being thrown to celebrate the success of the Mar-a-Lago club. Not even Donald Trump could afford to keep up this place on his own. So, in a clever move, he opened it up to membership at seventy-five thousand dollars a pop. He gets to live there, others get to enjoy it, and this national landmark will be maintained and preserved for future generations. Well, I've, I've always loved Mar-a-Lago. I think it's definitely the most beautiful building, house, um, whatever you want to call it. It's so enormous, it's hard to call it a house, but it's definitely the most beautiful building in Palm Beach and certainly one of the most beautiful houses in America. Not every club features a concert hall for after-dinner performances. But hey, then again, not every club has Donald Trump handing out tennis trophies. A tough team, folks. And of course, not every club has the Beach Boys playing after dinner music. While the band played, we snuck off for a tour of some of the house with Mar-a-Lago's head butler and historian, Anthony Senecal. This is the This entrance. is the main entrance hall. Uh, from 1927 on, this is the way you came in. You came in this hallway and came into what was known as the Great Room, the Gold Room, the Grand Salon, or as Mrs. Post would say, this is the living room. And this is and it's quite a living room, you have to admit. You've got a suspended ceiling made of molded plaster interlocking blocks that are all gold leaf. Using up all the gold leaf in the United States, I had to go to Europe to get enough to finish it. Really? They ran so, out of gold yeah, leaf? Yeah. So this is, do you think this is a little ostentatious, you know, <laughs> for a six-week winter home? This is the club dining room. The walls, canvases painted in Italy. The relief work around the walls and ceiling took three years to complete. This is the library. It's now the Mar-a-Lago Club Bar. This was always one of the most comfortable rooms in the house. I, I owe a lot of it to the English walnut paneling that Mrs. Post bought in England and then had shipped over here. Mrs. Covering many of the walls of Mar-a-Lago, Spanish tiles, some of them 500 years old. They come from a collection of 36,000 that Mrs. Post bought when building the house. This room has not changed since the 20s. The children's bedroom was built with a Sleeping Beauty theme. It features a beehive fireplace with plaster wild roses that wind around the entire room. All of the furniture is made to scale for a child. The bed was all hand carved. It's just incredible. Not a bad weekend pad, huh guys? The very latest, the spa, which just opened up recently. It just got the first five-star diamond award in the world. So pretty exclusive place. Mark. How big is this place, Jose? It looks like it's monstrous. 
about 20 acres, 114 rooms, and a lot of eccentricities. And they knew you when you got there. Mr. Diaz Millard, <laughs> your room is over here. Thanks, Jose. In Palm Beach, Florida this evening, a celebrity wedding promises to be extravagant, even by Palm Beach standards. Donald Trump is walking down the aisle for a third time. He'll tie the knot with Slovenian model Melania Nose at his Mar-a-Lago resort. For more about the Trump wedding, we turn to gossip colonist Jose Lambier of the Palm Beach Post. Good morning to you, Jose. Hi, Gretchen. So, I don't know, some people are billing this as the wedding of the century. I don't know if I'd go that far, but what do you, where do you put it? The wedding of the year? Uh, yeah, yeah, probably. The century, you know, we're, we're in 2005, so, I mean, there hasn't been one of these in quite a while, and uh, yeah, of the year so far, so far. Tell us a little bit about the Mar-a-Lago uh, resort, where, this, where the festivities are going to be taking place. Actually, that's one of the stars of the wedding, really. It's a great place. It's, uh, it's something that was built in 1926. It, it has this Mediterranean slash French look to it. It's 18 acres right on the ocean. It's a, it's a gorgeous place. The furniture in there is outstanding. And what the Donald has done for this is that he's actually built a new building. Uh, it's a $35 million ballroom that uh, is being used only for the second or third time tonight. Wow. And uh, I, I went through that place. He spent $7 million on 24 karat gold sheets that he encrusted in the walls and the moldings and all this stuff. Uh, he's got uh, every chandelier in that place, and he's got 17 of them. Cost him like a quarter million dollars. He's got gold pipings in the bathrooms. He's ah. got uh, green apple onyx on the floors. I mean, the, the place is outstanding. And this one he paid for. If he, he hasn't paid for he, much on his wedding, he paid for this <laughs> He didn't one. hear that chrome was in, I guess, instead of gold. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, let, let's talk a little bit about the prenup, because I know he didn't have one with Ivana, and then he had one with Marla Maples, and I'm assuming that he's going to have one here, too. Yeah, we understand this is a same deal as Marla. Uh, you have to remember, when he was married to Ivana for 15 or 16 years, I forgot, she got out uh, of this uh, uh, marriage with, uh, she was getting at least $25 million, and right. then she asked for more. Uh, and she actually has a house next door to Mar-a-Lago, sort of to remind him of how much money he paid out. <laughs> <laughs> the second time around with Marla Maples, uh, she, she got divorced, and they got divorced just shy of their fourth anniversary. And because of that, she got out of this with only one million dollars. Huh. So there is a time, you know, there's a time element to this. But uh, he and Melania have been together forever. I mean, I saw them together for the first time probably in 99. Right. So, well, about you know, six years, I think. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's fair, you know. She's paid her dues. Uh, quickly, I want to ask you about her dress because it's created quite a stir. It was on the cover of Vogue. Uh, there were price, uh, price points as much as $200,000, somewhere between one and $200,000. What have you heard about it? Well, it's, it's probably around the $200,000 range, but uh, they only paid for half of it. So uh, it's a two-tier dress. You, you have the, the bottom, uh, what, what's really attached to her body is a Vera Wang uh, satin number. And then uh, there is a, an overcoat sort of a thing uh, that's Christian Dior. And she's going to do the ceremony at the church with the whole full garb, which is something like 40 or 50 pounds. And afterwards, when they go to, to the, the club for, for the private party, then they'll, she'll shed the top and she'll just go with, uh, with the, the sexy little thing she has. <laughs> I only have about 20 seconds left, uh, Jose, but I understand that, that Trump applied for a fireworks permit at the last minute and, and the city said, hey, no go, you're not going to get any fireworks. And the, the funny thing about this to me is that there were about 25 people at the uh, emergency meeting in the city council and they actually cheered when the council decided <laughs> to vote him down. I guess there's still some, uh, I don't know, what, democracy bit. works or, yeah. or uh, people, people want to keep their privacy? Yeah, I think so. The good thing about this one is that, six, that there are six councilmen, five of them are actually going to the wedding, and they still <laughs> voted him down. <laughs> All right. Well, Jose Lambier, it's always great to get the inside scoop, and we appreciate your time this morning. My pleasure, Gretchen. And coming up next on the Saturday Early Show.